Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. Hey, guess what I did today? What? I went to Clint's, and I bought exactly 10 comic books, so that means the total is now 6,000. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, and, uh... 6,000, la baby! <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I'd like, I'd like you all to meet my uh, special guests, David Oliver and James Red Hodge. Um, they are in a uh, band with me at, at um... Uh, at the University of Louisiana in Monroe, um, and they are also fellow music majors. Yeah. Um, well, I might as well get to get to some of my topics. So let's start Victor's rant. First topic I want to rant about is Tom Brady. Um, of course, he's the New England Patriots quarterback. Well, well. And, um... He's, um... But the thing... Alright, here's here's one thing that I want to talk about. Alrighty, if you noticed, at the end of the um, Monday Night Football game this past Monday against the Carolina Panthers, he stormed over to the referee as they were going to their locker room, and he started jawing off at them just because of a retracted penalty. If that had been another NFL quarterback, let's say, oh, Alex Smith of the, of the Chiefs, or or um, Ryan Tannehill of, of, of the Dolphins, or... Drew Brees! Yeah, or even Drew Brees of, of, of my New Orleans Saints. Well, our oh, New right. Orleans Saints. Who that? Who that? That's right. Who that indeed. But anyway, yes. if, if, it, if, it hadn't, if it hadn't been one of them, they would have got fined big time about two or three days later. You cannot, you cannot tell me that. Now, a lot of Patriots fans won't admit this, but there's an unwritten rule when it comes to playing for the New England Patriots, and that rule is this, and it's and it's a dumb rule to be honest. You cannot talk to the media unless your name is Robert Kraft. Bill Belichick or Tom Brady. And if you don't believe us, ask Wes Welker. Who, to be honest, is doing a lot better now that he's with the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. Although he has a nagging injury, and I just hope he can play Sunday so he could so he can steamroll all over the New England Patriots defense. Yeah. I'm not and I'm saying that I'm not I used to be a Denver Bronco fan a long time ago. But I've been a but I've been a Saints fan my whole life. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. But one thing that I one thing I just want to say about Tom Brady, you are just a human being. You put your pants on one leg at a time like everyone else. And I don't know why the Patriots are letting you get away with all with whatever what whatever the things you say, but one one of these days it's gonna bite you right in the backside. Will be feather pillows all your life, baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you happen to be um, a New England Patriots fan, a U University of Michigan student that or a graduate that went to college with Tom Brady, or if you happen to be my old trumpet professor Alex Noppy, <laughs> and you're watching this, I'm, I'm, I'm then I'm going to tell you my favorite stand-up uh, uh, comedy special that starred Charlie Murphy. I will not apologize. Mm -mm. But, I still love you, Noppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Alex or Doctor Noppy, I presume. But anyway, um, uh, what else? Okay, I'm gonna open up the floor with questions. Do, do any of y'all have any questions y'all want to ask me? Any at all? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, David. Which comic book thus far this month? that you read is the most enjoyable one that you have read so far. Wow. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably have to say um, Avengers. And that's only because of, of the awesome lineup they have. They have Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Falcon, um, Captain Universe, Smasher. Um, that's just to name a few. But the thing is, Jonathan Hickman, who writes this book, 
I mean, he, he anything that he's ever written, it is it's amazing. I, I can't begin to tell you to tell you how amazing it is. And right now, it's um, there's a um, it's part of a the book's in a in a, in a tie-in with a miniseries in Marvel called uh, Infinity. And right now, all all these Avengers that I just named, or most of them anyway, are all in space to stop um, Thanos from um, from arriving on Earth. And so far, they it's not looking too good. But you know, if the, it, but you know, this is the Avengers. They if if, if there's a team that it's a superhero team that knows what adversity is and knows how to overcome it. It's them. All right. Any any, any more questions? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Red. Um. So one of my favorite superheroes of all time is Superman. Okay. And one of my favorite comic books to read is Superboy. Okay. Now, between Superman and Superboy, who do you think would win a fight? Uh. Well. No, dude. You have to think about it. You know, super. Now, now in the previous, you know, on the previous DC universe, which, um, okay, there, the all right. First off, the the Superboy, in the previous DC universe, and the Superboy in the current New Fifty Two universe are different. Uh, Superboy in the previous DC universe was a clone of both Superman and Lex Luthor. Right. And then uh, Superboy in this current universe, he is a clone of Superman and Lois Lane's. Uh, son from a parallel um, from an alternate timeline named John Kent but the only thing is is that this Superboy or the current one he has the same powers as Superman only difference is he has an extra power he has tactile telekinesis in other words anything he touch it explodes oh wow or, or it falls to pieces so <laughs> I don't know yeah that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a tough question that, yeah, it, it, yeah you're right it is a very tough question um I don't know. I'm all Team Superboy. Well, I'm Team Superman. Okay, I really don't. I can't really answer that question because you know because they're on the same side and they I, that we'll never really know. Yeah, we'll never. What, uh, who uh, who wins that? I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Oh, there. Yeah. Um. Have you seen the new Thor movie? Yes, I saw it um, the day it came out, November 8th. And what were your thoughts on it? Oh, my thoughts, let me tell you. It, there was more Thor, more Asgard, but the but there was, to me, it. I have no problem with, with comedy in in a comic book movie, but there it was the comedy was a little excessive. Yeah. Although my favorite... Um, my favorite uh, gist of comedy in that... In that entire movie, was when Loki shapeshifted himself to look like Captain America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the so entire, the yeah, the entire, um, the the entire movie theater just like to die laughing. What do you like? How Loki was portrayed in this movie better or in the past one? Uh, to be honest, in this one, hmm. because um, although. When he found, although in the first one, when he found out that you know he was adopted and he was actually a frost giant, that's when uh, you know what started hitting the fan. Yeah. And uh, but in this one, you know he kind of he some he he he, temp, he temporarily vindicated himself. You know, pretty much made up for all the stuff that he did in Thor, and the first Thor, and then the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Um. But the end of it. When he had, when he had, when he had shape shifted out of, when he had shape shifted him, when it was revealed that he, that he shape shifted himself to look, to look like Odin, that blew my mind because I really thought that he bit the big one early on in the movie. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see that coming at all, although I should have. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, David. Part of two questions. So. Okay. One. Hulk. Even though you don't want, I know you don't. But this is a cardinal sin not to do this. Okay. But Hulk versus Superman. Woo! In a boxing match. Whoa! Whoa! Wait a minute! Whoa! Wait a minute now! Wow! Okay. I already know my. We're talking. This is a boxing match. I. 
Well, you have Superman who has superpowers only because he's from Krypton and, and you know he gets he gets his powers from from the sun. Then you have the Hulk, who whose entire ga whose entire DNA is, is gamma radiated. Um, I'd probably have to say Hulk. Ooh, what I tell you. And 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 here and here's why, because. The more Superman is going to hit him, the more, the more, more, you know, hack, yeah, the more hacked off and, and 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 stronger he's going to become. And then, but to me, I think Hulk versus Superman would probably end up almost like Superman versus Doomsday in the, in the previous DC universe. It's, it's not gonna be. although I don't think. Superman, is, is, he'll probably like land at least two, three, or maybe four punches. But after that, Hulk's probably gonna go untouched. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You know. Oh, by by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we were supposed to have some more um, folks that 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 are in band with me here at uh, ULM, but um, they all bailed on me. Oh, and, and if you happen to be watching this episode and you're one of those people, I forgive you, Whole, wholeheartedly. <laughs> I'm I'm not I, I I'm not I'm not joking. I'm not, you know, I'm not talking out of my behind. I mean, because you know, y'all have just like just like me, y'all have lives. All right. Um, any more questions, guys? Okay, then. Well, without further ado, let's get to the comics I bought today. Oh, um, they just left a few minutes ago, but I want to thank Red, David, and uh, Mark for helping me out. Uh, they, they've got some stuff they need to take care of, just like I need to have some stuff that I need to take care of as soon as this show is over. Oh, if you haven't noticed, um, I'm on location at the um, ULM Band Building, which is on the campus of the University of Louisiana at Monroe. Um, you know, this is a special episode, so I wanted to uh, do it somewhere other than my apartment, which I've done um, five of the of the last seven of the first seven episodes, and I just want to make this uh, make this as special as possible. And who knows, somebody may come in while uh, I'm telling you about the the books I bought. So without further ado, here we go. Um, First up is Supergirl number 25. It's part three of the Krypton Return story arc. And um, let me tell you something. There, there, it, it, so far, there, there's some, some, we, some weird, wicked, <laughs> uh, some real wicked stuff that's um, going on so far in since the story arc began in Action Comics Annual number two. <coughs> Excuse me. And then up next is Green Lantern New Guardians number 25. This is the first issue after um, after the Lights Out story arc. And so far, um, at the well, at the end of uh, Green Lantern Annual number 2, which is the last chapter to uh, Lights Out, Kyle, who was thought to have who had thought to have died while going into the source wall with with, with Relic, who they just defeated, comes out the very end of it, and the Guardians, they decided, okay, what did you see? And he told them that the all the entities of the emotional spectrum have um, have all died and given their uh, given their power to him. So the Guardians had decided, okay, Nobody must know that you're still alive. Not now. And your and your new journey begins. Alright, up next is Uncanny X-Men number 14. This is the first issue of the book since the uh, Battle of the Atom story arc, which I still haven't uh, gotten to. I mean, as some of y'all may know, I, I have time to buy comics, but I don't always have time to read them because, well, I'm a college student. And, you know, I have, I have a lot of studying and practicing to do. And and 
But you know, I, but you know, I'm gonna chip away at all of them. I'm not gonna have this big stack forever. All right, up next is Thunderbolts number 18. Uh, this is an, an Infinity tie-in, and so far the Thunderbolts are going at going after going after some of the um, the folks in New York who who had been a who who had been um, transformed uh, by the Terrigen Mist that ended up hitting New York. Now, let me tell you something about the Terrigen Mist. It only affects those that have the um, inhuman gene. If you have if you if you carry the inhuman gene, if you if you get blasted with a Terrigen Mist, you'll become something you're not. Then up next is X-Men number 7. This is the first issue of this book since Battle of the Atom. And, uh... I have no idea who that is. But I'm going to find out once I get to it. Alright, up next is Fantastic Four number 14. And this one pretty much talks about, um... You know, they're still, they're still in space and they're still trying to get back to Earth. And they're still trying to find out uh, a way to, to reverse the, uh, the the condition that the conditions they're all in uh, due to their um, due to their cosmic ray altered um, due to the cosmic powers that they received, you know, at the beginning of well, when this book first came out back in 1961. And so far, from what I've read, the things rocks are have have completely come off. Um, the Human Torch, it looks like he, he's going to he's gonna be able to flame on, but no longer going to be able to flame off. And the, and the Invisible Woman, well, let's just say that some of her innards are, are being exposed. I mean, exposed as in her invisibility powers are... It, it, the, her skin is being invisible, but her, her organs are not. And at the beginning of this of this chapter, of, uh, well, this volume of the book reads, um, "Unbreakable skin due to the elasticity start to break." All right, up next is Guardians of the Galaxy number eight. This is another Infinity tie-in. The the Guardians of the Galaxy now join the um, join about the. Um, the battle outer space, but the question that remains: Will they be helping the Avengers, or will be, or will they be helping Thanos? Time will tell. Although, I think they'll be helping the Avengers. I mean, come on, Iron Man's a member of, of, of Guardians of the Galaxy as well as the Avengers. Why, why would he turn his back on them? All right, up next is Superior Spider-Man Team Up Number Six. This is, um, as some of y'all may know. The um, that it, that Peter Parker, or should I say, Otto Octavius's mind is inside Peter Parker's body. Hey, guess who just came in? Um, Stephen Taylor. He's also in uh, Bath Me here at ULM, and um, and like me, he's also a music major. What's up, comic folks? Um, but anyway, as I as as I said before, um, Otto Octavius. You know, remember he switched minds with um, with Peter Parker, and now he's inside Peter Parker's mind. All right, see you later, Stephen. And um, you know, and in this book, you know, it's pretty much it pretty much it pretty much um, speaks for itself because you know, uh, Doctor Octopus, which Octavius also goes by, um, you know, he was a member of the Sinister Six. And in early in earlier issues of Superior Spider-Man, the other book, and of course this book's called Superior Spider-Man Team Up. Um, he ended up kid he ended up kidnapping. Well, he had mugged and kidnapped all the um, the other five members of the, of the Sinister Six, and now he's um, using them for his own for his own goals. I tell you, this book. 
I, I love the job that Chris Yost does on this book, and just like I love the job Dan Slott does on uh, Superior Spider-Man. It's just amazing. But time will tell when Peter Parker will somehow come. I don't know how, but eventually he will. All right, up next is Avengers AI number six. In this issue, we find out who uh, Demetrios really is and why he's inside um, Iron, an old Iron Man armor. I mean, I want to know too, which is exactly why I'm why I'm going to be reading this as soon as I can, or as soon as I'm done studying and practicing. And right now, I I have to study for finals, which are coming up in less than two weeks, and I also have to be practicing for my uh, trumpet jury, which is um, less than two weeks. And finally, we have Avengers AI. We won't excuse me, not. AI, but Avengers number 23. This is also an Infinity tie-in, and the last issue of of Avengers, which is number 22, Captain Universe finally wakes up, and then she kicks some, she kicks some, some maker behind. Oh, by the way, the makers and the um, are these people who claim that that Earth is flawed, and they and they want to transform it into their own for their own purposes. Um, you know, they, although, I mean, they, they want to destroy it, although they're saying they just want to make it, but, you know, I, I think they want to destroy it. But that's only because, you know, I'm on the side of the righteous. All right, that's 10 o'clock today. And that brings the, the count to a total of, well, let me let the graphics speak for that. <laughs> Well, there you have it. 6,000 comic books. Um, I've said this before, but I'll go ahead and say it again. You know what? I, I just feel such joy in doing this show. And, you know, letting y'all know that, you know, for letting, expressing my love for comics. And, and not just my love for comics, but anything else in life. Because I know there, everybody's not a comic book nerd. Everybody's not a comic book person. That's what this show is designed for. It's designed for everybody. No matter who you are. Well, right now, I have the band building myself, but I'm quite sure that's going to change. It's either going to change if somebody comes in before the show is over, or after I'm done with the show when I, when I get up out of here. But, um... I just want to, I, I want to, first off, I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for um, all the folks that have viewed this, all the folks that are fans of this, all the folks ask me, what am I going to do in the next episode? But sometimes, what I'm going to do in, in the next episode, sometimes it depends on you. That's why I all, at the end of every episode, which I'm doing right now, I'm asking I always, I always want suggestions. Anything that's going to make the show better. I think the um, the earlier segment, the Victor Rance segment, and then the beginning of it, that had Red, David, and Mark in it, that was awesome. And uh, that will have to uh, paraphrase something that uh, Dr. Long, the, the director of bands here at ULM, uh, says, well, well, to paraphrase it, that will happen again. Of course, he says the opposite. I got no love for you, Doctor Long. Anyway, um, that's that's it for for this week. Um, tune in next week, and uh, let's do this again. Until then, I'm Victor Nunley. I'm the Comic Hero. See you next week. Till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero. I noticed that when I was counting comics earlier,
I noticed that I had two holes. Um, one is one book is Thunderbolts, and the other one is Avengers AI. So I'm going to. So that being said, I'm currently at the Books a Million here in Monroe to see if I can find those holes. All right, so come on, let's go. All right, first hole, Avengers AI number five. There it is. Okay. Now the second hole is Thunderbolts. I have number 16, and I bought number 18 earlier at Clint's Comics. Let's see if I can find number 17. I think this is it. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Um, well, that brings the count now to 6,002. And now all the holes are filled. All right. Hope y'all, hope y'all like that extra scene. Um, all right. Till next time. Be safe. Be blessed. Be a hero.